In this video, we're going to look at the package Cookie Cutter. This is a great package for taking templates that you create and getting your project started off on the right foot. Oftentimes in Django, when you start a new project, there's a series of things that you go through, a series of steps, a series of applications that you might want to use or have installed every time you start a new project. I know one of the things that I do is I always make sure to use Jinja and Django Pipeline. So using Cookie Cutter is a great opportunity for me to set everything up and all I have to do is run the cookie cutter command, feed it in some information and now I have that base project set up and I don't have to do the boilerplate that I normally have to do with every project. To get started with cookie cutter it's really simple. It's just a Python package so we'll do a pip install cookie cutter. From there you can actually start using templates. One of the easiest things to do is to use ones that are on GitHub. You can do that simply by doing cookie cutter and then giving it the URL of a GitHub repository. It actually goes through the process of checking it out and then asking you a few questions so it automatically knows how to populate some of the data in the template. And here I'm just filling out some basic information just to get it started. One of the things to note is repo name. That is actually what's going to be the name that we would have our repository or the code or the, or the name of the root folder that we have. Whereas project name is something that is a little more broad and would be in, say, a readme. So now that we've actually created our project from our boilerplate, we can go ahead and see what it created. If you do an ls, you see we have a br folder, and this is the folder that is created with our project. To show that we've actually taken some of that data we did on the input, let's look at our authors, and you can see my name is in there along with my email address can also look at the readme and see that PBR is all you need is in there as one of the other things and then the documentation automatically filled out to be br.readthedocs.org. That's all great, fine and dandy, but what in the world did we just do? To get an understanding of what just happened, let's go ahead and create our own cookie cutter template. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new template folder. And inside of that template folder, we're going to create a cookiecutter.json file. And in there, we're just going to populate some JSON. Repo name is, we're going to give a default value of repo name. Full name, we're going to give a default value of our, my name. And then config, this is just a random configuration to throw in there just to show that you can actually put whatever you want and Cookie Cutter will be able to handle it. Whatever JSON code you put into this file, Cookie Cutter will use accordingly to populate data in your template. So from there, we can go ahead and create a new folder under template one. Cookie Cutter uses Jinja to populate data. In this case, Cookie Cutter takes in that JSON file and populates a dictionary, essentially. And then we take Jinja and we do cookiecutter.repo name, which is the key, one of the values in our dictionary. So as you can see here, Cookie Cutter not only populates directories done in Jinja, but as you'll see in a moment, it'll also do information and files. And the reason we start out with the folder in inside of our template one is because template one owns the metadata about this template. So that's where your cookie cutter.json file goes. Everything else for the actual template starts in this cookie cutter.repo name. So with that in mind we'll go ahead and create a file.txt in our cookie cutter.repo folder. And in there we're going to do name, we're going to do cookie cutter full name, email, and config. And again, this just uses normal Jinja. So now we have created our template. Let's actually see how to run it. We just simply do a cookie cutter template one for the folder that our template's in. And it's going to run through that JSON prompting us for new input. We have repo name, and I'm just going to name it my app. I'm going to leave my name as normal. And then just config, I'm just going to add in some data. So now we actually have BR for our original thing that we imported from GitHub, my app, which we just did, and then template one is the template that we created. So if we actually look at our file inside of my app, you see the name and the config, but you don't see any email. If you look at the file.txt in our template, you see we have email, but if we also look in our cookiecutter.json, you notice we don't have email. So this can actually catch you off guard if you're thinking and expecting one thing to be in there. If it's not in that JSON file, it's not going to populate out into the rest of your code. It'll just be a blank space like in email. So 
So that's all fine and dandy and everything, and you have the basic idea of how to do this. So let's go ahead and create a new project for Django. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new template to directory, and we're gonna go into that. And we're going to create a cookiecutter.json file. Gone ahead and pre-populated a few things in here. We're gonna have project name, repo name, author name, email, and description. These are all normal things that you might want to fill out inside of your Django application. So the next thing to do is actually switch over to our Django 1.7 virtual environment and create a new Django project. In this case, we're doing demo proj. And when we CDN, we have our normal project. We have our root name and we have our manage.py file. And now we actually have to go through the process of replacing all instances of demo proj with something from our cookie cutter. So in this case, as in, to start out, you'll see we'll open up our manage.py and we'll change demo proj here to cookie cutter.repo name. And we're also going to change it in several other places. We're going to change it in WSGI in two places. And then we're also going to change it in our URLs. And then we're also going to change it in our settings file in a couple of locations. And we can just do that with a string replace. And with that, the base of our first Django project template is actually done. So now all we have to do is rename folders to use our Jinja structure. And we're going to do that with our root directory inside of template one. We're going to rename both demo proj on the upper and the lower side of the folders. And with that, we're actually ready to give it a shot. So if we go back into our demo folder, switch over to our cookie cutter environment and run cookie cutter on template two, then we're just gonna go through our series of questions that we have. And from there, it pops out our new project. If we'll CD into our project folder, switch over to our environment and start our run server, we can see it work. We've created a new Django template, so we can start our Django projects and get going with them much faster. And from there, you can really expand it any way you want and in a lot of different ways. All you have to do is just add new files and continue to build it out and populate that data from the JSON file that you're prompted for. And it just tell your files where to change everything. It's super simple, as you can see through the two examples that we went through. I really recommend that you give this a shot. You can use it for any language, any project, anything you want to use it for. Django is just the lowest hanging fruit since we do a lot of Django development. So with that, have a good day and join us for our next video.